We are so honored that you're able to join us today, family and friends, and it's my honor to introduce someone to you. Uh, you may not have a chance to meet him yet, but let me let you be assured, he is very personable. He loves the Lord and he loves talking to you. May you meet, may you greet, and may you pray for our sixth president of Dallas Theological Seminary, Dr. Mark Yarbrough. Well, good evening. good evening. It is so good to see you all tonight, and here we are at a convocation. And at Dallas Theological Seminary, this is the first. We have never had a convocation before. I don't even know what a convocation is. <laughs> so I looked it up, and it said, a gathering of people. <laughs> so I looked it up again, and I thought, what have other people said at convocations before? Because I have 10 minutes to talk to you. <laughs> so, in my research of speeches given at convocation ceremonies, events like this, I stumbled across a ceremony address from a small agricultural and animal husbandry college in South Dakota that had published its favorite all-time convocation address given in 1954. So, at this animal husbandry school, a man by the name of Dr. Fredrickson stepped up to the podium in full regalia, and he spoke these words, and I quote, Good tidings, students. A tiny bird was flying south for the winter. As it was flying, it got so cold that its wings froze, and sadly the bird fell to the ground in a large field because of its frozen wings. While the bird was lying there, a cow came by and dropped manure on it. As it lay there in the pile of manure, it began to realize how warm that it was. The manure was actually thawing him out. Well, he lay there all warm and happy and soon began to sing for joy. Just then, a passing cat heard the little bird singing and came to investigate. Following the joyful sound, the cat discovered the bird under the pile of manure and promptly dug him out and then disposed of him. Students, he said, always remember three things when working in the field. Number one, not everyone who drops manure on you is your enemy. <laughs> Number two, not everyone who digs you out of a pile of manure is your friend. And number three, when you're in the manure, for heaven's sake, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> well, although there may be truth in that little quaint story, I am so glad that at the beginning of a semester, we can appeal to the authority. We make no apologies at Dallas Theological Seminary that we believe all Scripture is God-breathed. God has spoken, and this Word is our guide. And so on an evening like tonight, for just a couple of minutes, I have turned to the book of Proverbs, a true book of wisdom. And while we think of it in terms of little quaint statements that are made, what we frequently forget is that there are actually characters in the book of Proverbs, such as the simple. You see, this person is not smart, and they don't want to be. And then we are contrasted with an individual by the name of the fool. This person is not smart either, but they think that they are. And then there's an individual called the mocker. The mocker is the person that is smart, humanly speaking, but they have absolutely no faith in God. And of course, we are introduced and asked to walk in the ways of the wise. This is the person that is discerning and integrating faith in God with life. But there is a character that is showing up from time to time on very specific times in this presentation of the book of Proverbs, a name that is almost unmentioned, but he is called, are you ready? 
He is called. Someone that is in the text that we frequently don't look at, he is called the sluggard. Can you say that with me? The sluggard. Several occasions, this individual is called a sluggard. And I stumbled across one of those passages, and I got to thinking about us tonight. You see, somewhere... And somewhere around 1,000 B.C., some individual as a teacher out of the book of Proverbs was walking along from his house to another point. And he began to look at this field that had been overtaken by weeds. And he said this, I went past the field of the sluggard, past the vineyard of the man who lacks judgment. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and I learned lessons from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man. Fascinating little text, isn't it? This sluggard, this individual that is identified by the writer as someone who has failed in their duty. It's interesting when you jump into the text, he just is real quick to say, I went past this field of a sluggard. It's a word that I don't use very often. Someone who is derelict in duty. Someone who has failed to meet their responsibilities. Someone who had privilege but squandered it. Listen to the text. It says this, right? I went past the field of the sluggard, past the vineyard of this man who lacks judgment. Notice how he describes this field. Thorns have come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds, and the stone wall that identified his land and protected it was in ruins. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Throughout the book of Proverbs, what we find out is that God calls all people to be stewards. And stewardship requires faithful service. God calls all people to be stewards, and stewardship requires faithful service. Obviously, in this text, it is talking about a real field. It's talking about a real vineyard. This individual, this teacher would walk by and would look at it every day, passing back and forth to realize what had been squandered. But the interesting thing is, is that the issue with the individual that was squandering what had been given to him, it wasn't because of a bad back. It was because of a poor will. And friends, when we see this text, I cannot help but think here at the beginning of a semester, what fields we have been entrusted by God. Faculty, let me talk to you for a second. God has given you a great field. It's called a classroom. And every opportunity that we have to step into that arena is an opportunity for us to be good stewards of this great trust that God has given us in the lives of our students. Can I say to you, let's not squander this moment. We as privileged people have an opportunity to invest what others have invested in us to pour into them. Don't miss your moment. It's given to you by God. Seize it for his glory, not for ours. Amen? Amen. Students, What a field God has given you. 
to our new students. What an opportunity God has given you to come to a place that cherishes God's word, to submit yourselves under the leadership of men and women who have poured their lives into understanding what God has said. Don't squander this moment. To our students that are here that have been with us for many, many years, what a privilege God has given you. You have lost the bright-eyed, bushy-tailed moment of your walk. They still have it. Look into their eyes. And don't forget what God has given you. I know you may be thinking, oh, hey, Mark, we're paying a lot of money to come and have bright-eyed, bushy-tailed moments. <laughs> yes, you are. But what a bunch of privileged people, parts of the world where they would give everything they have to be able to come and open freedom and to let this word change your life. Don't squander this moment. It's interesting. As the teacher went on talking about this, he made an observation. Verse 32 said this, I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed Man. See, friends, what we're given as a direction in this particular passage is pretty clear. Oh, there's nothing wrong with having fun. We're going to do that tonight. There is opportunity to enjoy fellowship. But the pattern that is talked about here is of an individual that made that the position of their life to rest, to relax, to simply have fun to find themselves in great frivolity. And where the text leads us in a physical sense is to say that will end up with absolutely a broke bank account. However, for us, can I say it this way? Scarcity will always overtake the sleepy sluggard. May none of us be that. God has called us to a task, to teach, to learn, for staff that is here, to serve. And we are privileged people to do so. And if that is true in the text, that scarcity overtakes the sleepy sluggard, flip that into a positive. Bounty awaits for the wise worker. Hey, friends, we've got a job to do. What a privilege for us to do it. May we not squander it. Maybe we capitalize on it. Because the last time I checked, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Let's make sure that there are a few more workers in the harvest field. Can we do that this semester? Come on, DTS. We got a job to do. Let's not miss our moment. Some of you have heard me this story years ago. Howard Hendricks came into my office one day. He leaned up. And he put his hands on my desk and he said, Yarbra, don't miss your moment. And I was like, Prof, what moment? Please tell me. And he left it as ambiguous as it needed to be. And so I pass along his wisdom to you. Don't be a sluggard. Let's get at it. We got a job to do. Don't miss your moment. 
Lord, thank you for new beginnings. Thank you for opportunities. May the work of our hands and the attitude of our heart capitalize, take advantage of, in a good sense, this moment that you have given us. We dare not miss it for the sake of those that need to hear the greatest news ever told. Our Savior Jesus. Amen. If you're a new student, please stand. <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do. Faculty, if you can get up, we're going to try to cover the bulk of the people in the middle, but I have outliers out here. If you are a new student, guess what? Current students, you get to lay hands on them as well because we're going to pray a blessing on our new students, but also on our current students. So faculty, please come and surround here in the middle. And Dr. Joe Allen will lead us in our dedication prayer. If you'll bow with me and we'll all pray together, I'll lead us. First and foremost, we want to praise you, our great God. You are the God of the universe, and yet we have the privilege of calling you our Father because we have put our trust in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You deserve all the glory, and thank you that you give us fullness of joy. We focus now on these students as they begin this new season of their lives. Many have come from distant lands, others from close by. Many have come from great personal cost. Father, I ask you to keep them all from any harm, accident, sickness, the evils of this world, and the evil one. Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. Help them, Lord, when they no doubt will need help this coming semester. Bless them when they need a good blessing. Comfort them when they need comfort. Encourage them. Walk with them. May these students abide in the land and see their time here through all the way to the end knowing that a desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. And then may they take the tools that they've acquired here at DTS and use them for your glory for the rest of their lives on this earth, teaching, preaching, discipling, parenting, counseling, soul winning, and on and on the list goes. We commend them to you, and this is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen.